Chris Smith. For Pitt, a 6'3 sophomore from Los Angeles, California, number 22, Jason Matthews. And now the forwards for Connecticut, a 6'5 junior from Newark, New Jersey, number 32, Tate Doors. For Pitt, a 6'4 sophomore from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Number 20, Darrell Porter. For Connecticut, a 6'5 sophomore from Highland Park, Michigan. Number 23, Lyman DePriest. And for Pitt, the 6'6 sophomore from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Double zero, Brian Shorter. And the center. For Connecticut, a 6'11 senior from Buffalo, New York, double zero, Cliff Robinson. And for Pitt, a 6'9 sophomore from Atlantic City, New Jersey, number 55, Bobby Martin. The Huskies are coached by Jim Calhoun. And coaching our Pitt Panthers, Paul Evans. And we are set to go here at the Fitzgerald Fieldhouse. Pitt 15 and 11, Connecticut 15 and 10. Back after these words from your local station. Connecticut Huskies on the floor, and they await the arrival of the Pittsburgh Panthers. A look at the respective records of both clubs. 44% shooting for the Huskies, 47 for Pittsburgh. Rebound margin pretty much the same. Pitt would like to up-tempo it a little bit more, though, John. I don't think there's any question. Uh, Mike Pitt knows that uh, when they score over 80 points, they've won 11 out of 15. And on the other hand, uh, Connecticut knows that when they keep the opposition under 70, they're 11 and 2. It's Gerald Fieldhouse, one of the tougher buildings to play around the Big East. And a job for the Connecticut Huskies here early will be to take the crowd out of the game. Robinson misses long. Rebound comes to Gamble as both Robinson and Shorter go down. Look underneath, the Priest couldn't handle the pass. Lyman to Priest getting the start tonight. That's something of a surprise. I think uh, defensive purposes, uh, obviously, he's going to wind up uh, matched up with Shorter early in the ballgame. Pitt's first trip, and Miller, as usual, runs the show. Loop it inside, and that's why Lyman DePriest is in the lineup. Lyman DePriest did the best job of all three guys that uh, played short of the last time out, and that's why Jim went with them tonight and did a nice job there making the interception. Robinson comes high. Georgia back it out. Connecticut will take their time tonight. DePriest pops out. Fifteen now on the shot clock. George calls the play again. It's Robinson popping out. Martin is there. Robinson just goes over and rebounds shorter. Good no call on the part of the officials there. Miller, the up quick Bobby Martin takes it in, and the foul goes on Connecticut underneath Tate George. Picks up his first. Jim Calhoun up and uh, trying to help the officials. He's into the ball game a little bit early here. Feels as though there was a foul down the other end when uh, Cliff Robinson made the move to the basket. Bobby Martin at the free throw line, and Paul Evans would like to see Bobby Martin get off to a quick start here. Bobby, after a couple of Monday nights ago against Villanova, when he took a terrible fall early in the game on an attempt at alley oop and then didn't play well the rest of that game, and has been in kind of a funk since then. And that kind of thing uh, happens to uh, young players. It's really difficult to come back uh, from an injury, whether it's uh, from the chin up or not. Hit first in the board, they lead one nothing. Minute and a half gone here. Always interesting when Jim Calhoun uses this smaller lineup to see the job that Tate George does of running the show and then posting up inside, and he does it exactly there. Gets a nice mismatch for the layup. Helps to have a 6-5 point guard, that's for sure. Miller finds Porter. There's the attempted at trap, and Robinson and Gamble combine on the steal. Connecticut uh, zone trap effective that time down the court. Gamble looks to penetrate. The runner goes down. And as you mentioned, Paul Evans wanting to uh, see Martin get off to a good start. Jim Calhoun wants to see Gamble get off to a good start. He's been in a little bit of a funk lately also. Darrell Porter outside. Rims out the three, but Bobby Martin there. Offensive foul. Bobby Martin put the shoulder into Robinson. 
Not much question about that. I think that would be a classic uh, block charge situation. Defender in good position. Bobby puts his head down now. Robinson, nice position, obviously. Everything's determined by the feet. Robinson had his foot in, established. Martin knocked him down. Offensive foul. Connecticut getting at least the early start that they hoped for. Smith, little runner in the lane, is short. Tap won't go. The free second follow won't go. Rebound loose. And we've got a foul. It'll be Robinson is first. And we don't have to uh, mention this uh, early in the game how important that is. The uh, one thing that Jim Calhoun will say that they cannot afford is to have Robinson get in an early foul trouble. Robinson and Martin joking with each other on the other end. Cliff obviously he didn't get a good shake on the call. Porter again pops out, tries again, hits this one, just two, had a foot on the line. Good out, an aggressive man to man. Priest on a wing looking inside at Robinson. Shorter will give the Priest a lot of room and uh, concentrate more on getting his foot into the paint and helping out on Robinson. Here's Robinson coming around the screen. Little double pump job goes down. Oh, forgive and he me. Came up uh, limping, Cliff did. Smiling, but limping. Looked like a guard on that one, but uh, may have wound up pulling some kind of a muscle as a result of the uh, double dip. Robinson still hobbling. And he looks like he's in pain as Matthews knocks down a three. Yeah, Robinson definitely has something bothering him. Rod Sellers is going to come into the game, and Cliff Robinson limps to the bench. A major blow for Connecticut, tied at six. Let's he's see had, if we can spot it. He's had a history of injuries. Here he makes the uh, move through the lane. He winds up having right to overextend. Oh, yeah, he stepped on uh, yep. someone's foot there. Stepped on Jason Matthews' foot as he was making the drive. Winds up uh, double dipping, super shooter's touch for that basket to get down, but definitely stepped on someone else's foot. Back line. The ball is lost by Chris Smith on the offensive end, and Pittsburgh gets it and a chance for the lead. Nice defensive play on the part of uh, Sean Miller. Interesting matchup there, Chris Smith and uh, Sean Miller. Smith did an outstanding job on Miller last time out. Yeah, Rewrapping the right ankle of Robinson. Martin got the loose ball. Too hard off the glass. Volleyball rebound. Martin, good hands, and the foul outside is going to go on Sellers. Martin has really been involved physically both ends of the uh, court so far. Seems as though he's pumped up for the ball game. First foul on Sellers, third on the team. Let's take another look. Here we have uh, Martin coming up with the uh, ball in the uh, paint. No question about the uh, foul on Sellers. Martin, two of three now at the strike. He's a 65% free throw shooter and. Pittsburgh is up one, seven, six. And we are going to get our first time out. 15.58 to go first half. Pittsburgh by two. You know what a three-point play is in basketball. Here's what it is at Days Inns. Great rooms, great prices, and great locations. And thanks to our 130 owners throughout the Big East Conference, you not only get a great room at a great price, but you get pools, lounges, restaurants, even meeting rooms. So remember, great rooms, great prices, and great locations. Now that's a winning three-point play. Having the new spirit at your Dodge dealer means searching for a new car won't give you the blues. The front-wheel drive Dodge Shadow has over 40 standard features, our 770 protection plan, and ES discount package savings of $700. After all, why should you get the blues when all you really want is a good value? The new spirit of Dodge. You know, Piedmont Airlines is making it easy for you to visit old friends, like the Crab Apples. Hi, Mr. and Mrs. Crab Apple. Or your favorite acting teacher. Emote, students. Emote. Or your old college buddies. Hey, guys. Piedmont presents Going Places Prices. Really low fares to over 170 cities. Call Piedmont or your travel agent now. You can even visit an old army buddy. Yo. 
Jacob Robinson trying to get himself ready to get back into this game, and Connecticut will have to hang close until he can. They're down two right now, 8-6. And there's no taping job in the uh, world that takes care of stepping on someone else's foot. Here we see the field goal percentages early, three for eight for Connecticut, and two for four for Pittsburgh. Tate George in charge of getting through this pressure and manages to break it. Let's see where Connecticut goes for their offense now with Robinson on the bench. See if they try to get something from Young Smith. Very content to take a little time off the shot clock, that's for sure. Tate George, and he traveled as soon as he caught it. A hop, skip, and a jump. Mm -hmm. And Robinson is back up and into the game. So Rod Sellers sits down, and we'll have to watch Cliff a couple of trips and see how he moves. Doesn't seem to be limping at all as he comes on the court. Sigh of relief for Husky fans. Jason Matthews spots up. Rebound, weak side gamble. Nice job to take it away from Martin. Here comes Smith in the middle, George. Baseline, Robinson, first time touching the ball since he's back in. Let's see if they go again. Over the top, they do. He tips it instead to Gamble. Blocked by Bobby Martin. Robinson's follow goes down. And a foul on Darrell Porter reaching in. Great block, Bobby Martin. Super defense. Cliff Robinson, ever the opportunist, comes up with the uh, offensive uh, carom. Back up with an opportunity for three here. Here's a look. Here we have that block by uh, Martin, all right. Then uh, Robinson tips the ball to Gamble. Blocked by Martin. Robinson, ever the opportunist. Nice head fake. Gets the defense off the court. Opportunity for three and converts. Four points now for Cliff. And Connecticut back up by one. Connecticut in extended pressure. Zone press. Huskies trying to do something here they did very effectively against Syracuse when they won down in Hartford, Joe, and that is speed up the game defensively, then slow it down offensively. And that's such a difficult thing to do. Pittsburgh throws it away. Unless you do it every single game to uh, try to uh, affect that kind of a game plan, it takes really special concentration on the part of the individual players on the court. Because when you get the up-tempo going defensively, you want to run offensively. And obviously, they don't want to do that in this building tonight. Freeze pops out, looking in low. Lyman puts it on the floor. A little left-handed leaner goes down. Lyman DePriest, one of those interesting players. He's predominantly a south core shooter, but he can shoot it either hand. Three-point Connecticut lead. Connecticut showing some zone now. Matthews trying to spot himself down in the corner. Double team. The Smith jumped in. Out of bounds. The pass a little low for Brian Shorter to try to handle. Switching oh, defenses on the part of Connecticut has been very effective so far. The press has turned the ball over a couple of times. The uh, individual defense, the priest doing a nice job on Shorter, and now the zone defense causes the turnover. Rod Brooken and Murray Williams have both come into the game and will pick each other up on this defensive trip. Chris Smith now to run the show as Tate George gets a break. Rod Brooken, of course, had that fantastic game the last time out against uh, Connecticut. It's six for nine from three-point land. And the Huskies taking the shot clock down each and every trip. Tate George is out of the ball game. Smith takes over as the point guard, gets his own shot there, top of the key. The priest the rebound, Brian Short of the foul as he got there late. What a heck of an athlete uh, Lyman DePriest is. He's in the ball game, particularly for defensive purposes, but here he is on the offensive glass, just with a great nose for the ball, good quick leaping ability, strong kid. No question about the foul. The priest goes to the bench, Willie McLeod in first time tonight. Jim Calhoun would tell you that. There's a long one for Gamble. Spots up, won't go down. Rebound loose, out of bounds. Connecticut catches another break and gets it back again. Jim Calhoun would tell you that Willie McLeod is playing at starter pace, but he just feels as though he gives the team such a boost when he comes in off the bench that he likes to make him the sixth man. You can hear the Connecticut assistant coaches saying, go to the glass, Murray. 
Smith, a little penetrating move. Runner goes down. Nice little runner through the lane versus the Pittsburgh zone as both teams now show a little bit of switching defenses. Five-point Connecticut lead, biggest of the night. Connecticut again in that 2-3 zone. It's a collapsing zone, but it's very, very active. Porter knocks it down. Darrell Porter. Porter has a shooting eye tonight. Sure does. Not shy at all about letting him go. Porter averaging just eight a game. He's got four already. Miller out on Smith. That's an advantage, I would think, to Smith, at least on the offensive end. Last time out, I think everyone would say advantage Smith. Turn around, foul from behind. Sean Miller got there late. Sean Miller doing the right thing, though. Diving down on the uh, big guy. Wound up grabbing him by the wrist, though. Tate George is going to come back in. Chris Smith will sit down first time. It's Cliff Robinson to the uh, foul line, a 67% shooter, and uh, Mr. Do-It-All for the Huskies leads in virtually uh, every statistic. We mentioned uh, before the ball game, that great game he had last time out, 24 points, 12 rebounds. And has shown over the last, what, five or six games, Joe, has played with a, I want to call it a renewed aggressiveness. I think uh, Jim Calhoun has spoken to him and said, hey, it's your job to put it on your shoulders and carry us. And Cliff all of a sudden wants the ball and is trying to do it. Connecticut again by five. Bobby Martin had one trouble finding anybody. Now it's Brooklyn who meets the double team. Again, the Connecticut zone press, relatively effective. Just got it over. It doesn't have to turn the ball over to be effective. It can take you out of your tempo. And watch Tate George and Chris Smith trying to make sure that Miller runs the offense from out deep. Miller launches one, rebound Robinson. Connecticut a chance to go seven up. Robinson the trailer pulls up for three. Rebound Gamble, excellent job by Phil Gamble and a foul is called on Darrell Porter. And so far the Huskies have been either opportunist or just ready for the ball game. Up on their toes doing a real nice job on the offensive board. Quicker to the ball, I agree. 11.36 to go first half. It's Connecticut by five. Back after these words from your local station. Leave it to the good hands, people. Compassion. You can't teach it or place too great a value on it. But you could measure it down this very road on the morning of June 23rd. In the actions of Allstate Claims Adjuster Don Mulder, who at 5 a.m. drove 60 miles to a fire site. All just to shorten the distance between a man's loss and a man's recovery. People like Don Mulder. Another reason. You're in good hands with Allstate. There's something special cooking at Eaton Park. Has been for 40 years. Just under 12 minutes to go here first half. And a reminder, this copyrighted telecast is produced by the authority of the Big East Conference and is intended solely for the private, non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Big East Conference is prohibited. That's a surprise, Joe. Oh, big surprise. The Connecticut uh, defense has done an outstanding job, as they did the last time, of keeping the ball out of Brian Schroeder's hands. Last time out, he only had eight shots, and that's not part of Paul Evans' game plan. He'd like him to get as many as 20. John Gwynn getting his first look tonight, number 15 at the guard spot for Connecticut. Williams, McLeod, Robinson, and George, the other players out there for Jim Calhoun's club. Pat Kavanaugh in the game for the first time tonight, replacing Sean Miller for Pitt. And when Gwynn gets going, he can be an exciting player. George, good cut by Robinson without the ball. Can't put it down, but the rebound off to Tate George. And Connecticut continues to get offensive rebounds. Just a real great job of having a nose for the ball and being a little bit, uh, you know, more alive in the ball game so far than the Panthers. They're certainly not the bigger team on the court. A cloud down in the corner. Still plenty of time on the shot clock, 24 seconds. Pittsburgh in the zone now. Willie McLeod, little leaner in and out, and a rebound to Brooklyn. That one was three quarters down. 
Kavanaugh now to set the pit offense, and we'll see if Connecticut continues to change defenses almost every trip. Willie McLeod calls with the foul, trying to hold off Brian Shorter. Man-to-man -man defense. Uh, Willie McLeod trying to uh, not allow uh, Shorter to establish position in low. Here's Shorter trying to establish himself on the block. Willie McLeod, no question about the push, pushing with the knee and the thigh. Got him a little bit with the forearm up around the neck, too, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> Porter takes a pull-up. No. Rebound to George. Connecticut, one of the few chances to run tonight. George looked inside, gave it to Gwynn on the baseline. Leaner goes down. John Gwynn is first two. Connecticut by seven. Pitt has scored ten points in 11 minutes. Shorter. Short. Shorter felt as though he was hit on the arm and certainly the result of the shot looked as though he might have been touched. Pittsburgh has a, uh, a funny reputation this year of playing outstanding basketball against some of the great teams in the country and just coming out flat sometimes. And this may be one of those nights. They certainly appear a bit flat. George, little leaner, too hard off the glass, rebound shorter. Kavanaugh finds Brooken down in the corner. Inside shorter, and he lost it, but it was tipped away out of bounds. Pittsburgh ball. Might have been Tate George helping down a little bit. Might have touched that one on the way out of bounds. Murray Williams out of the ball game. Jason Matthews in for Pitt. Chris Smith in for Connecticut. Connecticut will go a little bit deeper into its bench on the normal circumstances than will Pittsburgh. Gwen has got Matthews, and a bump is going to be called on Gwen. And he might have had a pretty good case for a foul going the other way as Jason had his mind made up he was going to the hoop. There was no question. That was a, uh, a call play from the bench. One-on-one -on -one opportunity here. Matthews going against uh, Gwynn with the idea of the mismatch. George jumping in to help out, and that's a travel on Brian Shorter outside. And so far, the Connecticut uh, defense has been outstanding in terms of what uh, its game plan was, which was to not give Shorter too many offensive opportunities. Connecticut getting probably half of those on the offensive board. I was going to say the difference there at 10 to 5 is probably on the offensive board. Ball is turned over by the Huskies. They lead by 7. Probably wish they led by a lot more right now. Matthews hits the three and nearly cuts it in half. I've always thought that young Matthews is one of the truly underrated players in the Big East. I think he's an outstanding talent. 17-13 and the crowd suddenly back in it. Most of them on their feet cheering for Pitt. Robinson can't silence them. Out of bounds. It'll be Pitt ball. Matthews three-pointer and the crowd into the ball game. 8.09 to go. See whether or not things change here. Very low score in the first half, and you can hear him here. Fitzgerald, they are really into it. Game played at Connecticut pace so far. Calhoun is pleased with the pace. Good hustle by Tate George as Rod Brooken was all alone underneath. And we're going to get a timeout. 7.56 to go first half. The Connecticut lead is four. We'll be back after these words from your local station. It's March, and your Jeep Eagle dealer is blowing away the competition. Get a great deal on an Eagle Premier, plus extra savings. Get cash back on top of your Eagle Summit deal. And get Jeep savings this big as we set out to break all sales records. There's never been a better time to grab savings like these. But hurry, once these deals stop flying, it's all over till next March. See your all-star Jeep Eagle dealers, where you can expect the best. Wiley Coyote is up to his old tricks, trying to catch that roadrunner. Looks like he's been using the Donnelly Directory. It has every listing you'll ever need. And the Donnelly Directory has valuable coupons so it can save you a ton of money. Oh, no! 
pony ever learned? Good thing he has his Donnelly Directory with coupons worth hundreds of dollars. The Donnelly Directory can really save you. It's the yellow pages and much, much more. Welcome back to Fitzgerald Fieldhouse, and a lot of important Vicky's games being played tonight. Two others to be exact. Here's a look at one. First half action, the Villanova Wildcats up on St. John's by six. And here at Fitzgerald, it's 17-13, Connecticut by four. And we'll be updating you on Providence and Boston College, another important game as the evening goes on. And that's interesting to see Villanova up. If West and uh, Wilson are hurting and not playing, and Young Walker broke his arm uh, the other day, that's a surprising score. Smith the steal, finds George on the break. He leans in, no good tip, won't go down, and Shorter pulls it off. Kavanaugh, the pull-up for two. Gutsy shot by Pat Kavanaugh. Uncharacteristic that Kavanaugh would go to the hoop with that one. Gamble can't answer, rebound broken. Chance to tie. Back to Jason. Shorter, a little screen. Offensive foul, Jason Matthews. Nice play, Willie McLeod. Nice defensive play, Willie McLeod. As you mentioned earlier, Jim Calhoun really feels as though Willie is a key role player in this ball club. Here it is, using the uh, pick and roll opportunity. Willie gets nice position on uh, Matthews, draws the charge. Gets a rest, Lyman DePriest back in the ball game. The combination of McLeod and DePriest have done an outstanding job, though, on Brian Shorter so far in this ballgame. Connecticut's lead down to two. It had been as large as seven. Pitt has scored five straight points. Smith goes on Kavanaugh. The pull-up goes down. And that's the Chris Smith of uh, the Bridgeport High School thing, where he's work as the point guard, go one-on-one -on -one from the top of the key for his own shot and make it. Also a terrific defensive play. Quickness. Martin down low. Hits a turnaround. Five points for Bobby Martin. Williams right back. Tip won't go from the priest and it's pulled down by Shorter. And they've got a foul. Murray Williams, the frustration foul, ran the court real well. Chris Smith made a perfect pass to him. Murray wasn't able to uh, make the layup. Was frustrated. Tries for the steal. Makes the foul. Next foul will put Connecticut over the limit. Same for Pittsburgh. Both teams with six, and there's Providence, a nine-point lead with 12 minutes remaining first half over Boston College. Shorter outside. Martin, the offensive board, then lost it, and a foul is going to be called on Bobby Martin. A little too aggressive trying to go back and get it, Joe. I thought they might call that out of bounds uh, off pit and uh, no foul, but uh, a bit of a uh, quick uh, whistle there. Proper call, I guess. But Robinson goes to the foul line. Paul Evans not thrilled with that particular call. Felt as though it was a bit of a uh, touch foul. Second on Bobby Martin. So again, you, you and I were talking before the game, Joe, about the fact that Pittsburgh basically a six-man team, and so if you're Paul Evans, you really got to watch the fouls. Oh, foul trouble, a big, big factor for them. Good Robinson, eight points off to a good start here. Huskies out in their 2-2-1 uh, zone press. Connecticut 5-4 as we approach the six-minute mark. Martin, a couple of fakes, too hard, rebound, loose, volleyballed around, saved by DePriest, nice athletic play. Smith weaving his way up, gives it up to Gamble. Gamble a drive, strong to the hoop, count the basket, and an offensive foul, no basket, says Gene Morgan. Jim Calhoun's going to want to see that again. 
Obviously, the rule is clear. If the shot has been released and then the foul takes place, the basket should count. It seemed as though that might have been the case there. Gene called it a player possession foul, but Jim Calhoun has a reason to complain on that particular call. Connecticut lead stays at four, five and a half to go first half. Connecticut dominating the offensive board. Pittsburgh going an awful long time with uh, Sean Miller on the bench. Shorter to the hole for two. First bucket of the night for Brian Shorter. And that's where Paul Evans wants him to play in and around the paint. He doesn't want him taking that 18 to 20 foot jump shot that he took last time down. Lyman DePriest goes on Shorter. Now he has to retreat a bit. Bounce pass thrown away. Here comes Brooken. Robinson's got an angle. Brooken got two. We're tied at 21. Connecticut wants to get Robinson into the offense this particular possession. Connecticut had managed to get this crowd out of the game, but they are back in force. Smith just takes Kavanaugh. Just took him one-on-one -on -one from the top of the key. Nice little spin move. Made the 15-footer. Got the shooter's roll. You see, you may see more of that. Because neither Kavanaugh nor Miller can cover Smith. I don't think so. Again, as we mentioned, that's the uh, value of quickness. Murray Williams out defensively now on Kavanaugh. Brooken lines it up. Robinson tipped it nicely to Smith. No foul there. Brooken, a leaner, goes down. Brooklyn might have got away with something there, but did the nice job pursuing the ball. Took a strong to the basket. Made the little semi-jump uh, hook. We got ourselves a tie. Three minutes, 35 seconds to play first half. Robinson kicking it out. Gamble. Phil knocks down two. Second bucket of the night for Gamble, a player that Connecticut really needs to get on a little bit of a roll. Short of the screen for Matthews. Brooken loads up again. Short. They shorter. Got two. Now it's uh, Pittsburgh that's doing an outstanding job on the offensive board, retrieving the missed shots. Connecticut has lost track of Shorter on a couple of trips here. I think so. They can't afford to do that against someone who is as good a player as Shorter. Robinson squares up and knocks down his 11th point of the night. With Robinson, as we've mentioned a couple of times before, going to be a, a shooting or scoring forward uh, someday in the NBA. That's the kind of shot he's going to make a lot of money with. Inside Bobby Martin and a mismatch with Gamble. That's the third attempt there. Won't go. That's an offensive goal ten. No bucket as Bobby Martin was in the cylinder. Ball was off the rim, but definitely above the uh, cylinder. Bobby Martin has no right touching it there. We've got a timeout. 27-25, Connecticut by two. I'm not going to sit here and tell you AT&T's long-distance rates are competitive. I'm going to prove it to you. If you're with another long-distance company and your business spends at least $120 a month, call us about our discount calling plans, AT&T Pro Watts. If you qualify, here's the deal. We'll pay for the sign-up fee, the switch over charge, and if within three months you're not completely satisfied with our quality, value, and price, we'll even pay to switch you back. So what have you got to lose? Even the call is free. 1-800-222-0400. Pick up the phone. Call us. <laughs> If you're planning a vacation this winter, U.S. Air has some good news and some bad news. The good news is U.S. Air has low fares on lots of departures to sunny Florida, Arizona, and California. The bad news is our low fares are round trip. Twenty-seven twenty-five, Connecticut by two, two thirty-three to go here first half and. Brian Shorter hitting the offensive board. Missed jumper by Brooken here, but Connecticut falls asleep a little bit on their defensive end there. Brian Shorter does a nice job of pursuing the ball offensively. Deuce for the Panthers. And the Plymouth player of the game to be selected at the conclusion of this game and during every game televised by the Big East Conference Television Network is all part of the Chrysler Corporation sponsorship of Big East basketball. 
Pittsburgh now in uh, extended full court man to man pressure. Tate George back in the ball game for the Huskies at the uh, point guard position. Let's see if Connecticut clears out a little bit here. It plays a two man game with Smith and Robinson. They go into Robinson. Tough shot. He hits it. Looks very, very good, Joe, at feeling the pressure and then just falling away in the opposite direction. And just has that real nice shooter's touch for a big guy. Kavanaugh took it in, reach in foul, Chris Smith. As we mentioned, the most surprising statistic in the uh, first half to me so far outside of the early Connecticut uh, offensive rebounding advantage would be the amount of minutes that Kavanaugh has played. Sean Miller went to the bench early. Kavanaugh may be the better defensive player of the two, but it, it's almost relative, and that's a matchup, whether it's Kavanaugh or Miller, that you know Jim Calhoun's going to really go at. And I think uh, Sean Miller is a key guy for Pittsburgh if he's able to run the offense the way that Paul Evans wants him, where he can penetrate to the top of the key. But so far, Connecticut's been able to keep him a little bit further out on the perimeter. He's not as effective out there. Kavanaugh has responded with four points. It's a two-point lead, and Connecticut's got it in the ball. Inside George, over the top, missed the layup. Couldn't get it to fall with the left hand. And again, there's that terrific advantage that Tate George has as a point guard where he can uh, get that mismatch, but he has to be able to bury that one. Brook and Gamble the quick hands to slap it away. Up ahead, Smith launches a three, buries it. Chris Smith playing at his own pace. The rest of the Huskies are walking, but Smitty's running. Nine for Smith. Connecticut back up five. Jim Calhoun won't take that one back. Connecticut back out in the zone now. Gamble out on Brooklyn. Quick look underneath. Tough shot by Jason Matthew. Actually, it looked as if Connecticut was in the tuna triangle that particular time down the court. They take some time off the clock here, this possession. Use most of the 45 seconds. Under a minute to go in the half. 50 seconds now, 30 on the shot clock. Double zero, you think that means that they may get something for Robinson this time down the court? Chris Smith trying to find an opening, got to one and hit again. Found one, used his uh, teammate Willie McLeod as a pick very effectively to get open there. 11 for Smith, and it would appear Connecticut's going into the locker room with the lead here as Pitt looks for the final shot of a half down five. And Chris Smith has had an outstanding offensive performance uh, for this first uh, 20 minutes here. He's been playing very, very well over the last 10 ball games for Jim Calhoun's Huskies. Martin looking inside for Shorter, couldn't get it in there. Steal by Smith, he's got an eye on the clock, takes a runner. Basket didn't go, and I'm not sure it would have counted, but the Connecticut Huskies have played themselves a whale of a half here on the road. We're at halftime, Jim Calhoun, a happy coach at 34-29. Back after these words from your local station. information systems 30 days 30,000 miles everybody's got a guarantee right not many lifetime guarantees though look at this genuine leather and a guarantee that says if the sole wears out before the upper ever you'll get a new pair now what would you expect to pay for men's dress shoes that look this good and last this long on sale for $49.90 and that's for two pairs the Genuine Leather Sale, now at Endicott Johnson and Father and Son. It's March, and your Jeep Eagle dealer is blowing away the competition. Get a great deal on an Eagle Premier, plus extra savings. Get cash back on top of your Eagle Summit deal. And get Jeep savings this big as we set out to break all sales records. There's never been a better time to grab savings like these. But hurry, once these deals stop flying, it's all over till next March. See your all-star Jeep Eagle dealers, where you can expect the best. 
The Dream Waterbed's Better Sleep Sale is here, and the revolution for better sleep has begun. We've cut prices like never before to make good sleep more affordable for you. Save $100 on the beautiful Country Rose Poster Bed, now just $329. Or sleep in luxury in the Walnut Grove Canopy Bed, now $999. The complete suite, only $1699. Save on these and all of our other beds and accessories at Dream Waterbed's 14 locations. The revolution for better sleep. It's on at Dream Waterbed's. It's got to be a dream. Want to know more? Turn to WTAE for News Extra. Monday night at 11 o'clock, the semi-automatic assault rifle in the hands of police, an effective weapon against crime, but in the wrong hands. You see a guy go berserk someplace else, and before you know that, it, it, it's happened again. It's happened again. Sales of assault guns are soaring, a legitimate weapon or tragic temptation. A WTAE for News Extra, Monday night at 11 o'clock. It's, it's very hard because being a student athlete and uh, trying to play basketball, it takes a lot of time. You really, you really can't do much socially. You, uh, you spend most of your time from the morning to like two o'clock doing schoolwork. Then you come in and play basketball from like four to six. Then you have to go to study hall from like seven to nine. Then come, come back to your dorm and study for about three or four hours. So most of your time is like to yourself and to your work and uh, getting prepared for games. Like a day, you know, we'll have maybe, uh, you know, work out in the morning, go to breakfast, you know, before 8 in the morning, go to breakfast, go to classes, maybe between classes, go to like an individual instruction for an hour, work out, shoot, then go to practice for maybe two hours from 2 or 45 to 4 or 45, go to dinner, then go to study hall for maybe three hours and just study. You know, it's a very busy day and, you know, it, you know, obviously, the Big East, you know, it's got the TV and all the glamour, and but there's also a price to be paid, you know, for us, you know, doing all those, you know, things that you see on TV. You have to just uh, get your priorities straight, and just, uh, just really just keep digging in, in the books, going to class every day. And um, we miss a lot of classes during this time of the year, so uh, we have to uh, get our tutors and our, our academic advisor uh, to set up our classes and get our homework and just to make sure that we get things turned in on time. So. Very hard to play basketball and go to school, you know. Like tonight, we're gonna have to go home very late, get up in the morning at eight o'clock, go to class. So uh, the for academics come first and then the basketball, the athletics come second. So uh, we concentrate on our schoolwork a lot. Academics is a totally, you know, different thing as far as basketball is concerned. I think you have to definitely separate the two. Uh, but at the same time, understand that, you know, there's toughness that has to go on on the court. And if you can take that toughness on the court and apply it to the classroom, I think that can only help you. It's very hard to do. I think people see the, the glamorous uh, lights. What they don't see is the, uh, the practice sessions. They don't see the uh, after practice sessions, the study hall. They don't see the fact that you can't, you're so monitored in classes, you can't miss a class. You know, we all, as I did, <laughs> had days in, in which maybe in the morning you'd roll over for that 8 o'clock class and said, I'll get it on Wednesday instead of Monday. And that doesn't happen with our kids. We, you know, we really feel like our kids, being scholarship student athletes, being highly visible people, they can't miss a class. Well, we know that we have to concentrate on school first, and then basketball comes second. So that's basically it. Um, that's basically it. I like playing basketball, and I know if I'm gonna play basketball, that I have to hit the books. So that's one of the things I have to deal with, and that's one of the things I can deal with at this time. I really don't like to think of basketball as having a great future, like going on the pro. I just want, and my mother always told me to get my education first. And uh, that's what I'm here for, to get my education. And uh, hopefully I'll build on my education for my future. Chris Smith having himself a night here tonight. It's 34-29. Five-point lead for the Huskies. We'll be back to look around the Big East right after these words from your local station. Introducing McDonald's new country-style McChicken. I grew up on those homegrown ways. Country style, a down home team. Where I come from, country style means chicken like this. Juicy all white breast meat, a crispy country coating, and real country seasoning. I'm not swayed by those big city ways. New country style McChicken. Real country style taste and a brand new way to love it. That's where I come from. New McChicken. Pella presents the difference between ordinary windows and windowscaping. Windows. Windowscaping. Windows. Windowscaping. If you like what you see, talk to the windowscaping experts only at your Pella window store.
For a free booklet of windowscaping ideas, visit the Pella Window Stores at these locations or call us at this toll-free number. Maybe you can't change the way of the world. But you can take an alternate route in the Audi 90 Quattro. A car that sticks to the road, not to the rules. Because it assigns power to whatever wheels need it, whenever they need it. Ample reward for resisting the commonplace and taking the alternate route. Welcome back to the Fitzgerald Fieldhouse, everyone. And the roller coaster season for the Pittsburgh Panthers continues here, at least through the first half, 34-29. It's a five-point lead. The Connecticut Huskies have it. I'm Mike Gorman, along with the executive director of the Basketball Hall of Fame, Joe O'Brien. Let's take a quick run through the Big East and pass out our awards, and then we can talk about tonight's game. And a quick look at the standings right off the bat, and we see Georgetown secured right up there on top. But after that... Well, Seton Hall is pretty solid, actually, in second place. But after that, Joe, anything goes. Any kind of a trade-off of ball games here, and Syracuse could wind up uh, falling down as far as fourth in the uh, league. And obviously, each one of those ball games tonight has an effect upon the seedings for the tournament coming up. Villanova, Providence, St. John's, Pittsburgh, Connecticut, all playing each other tonight. So that's going to be an interesting evening as we go along. And we've got some halftime scores coming up. The results earlier this week: Georgetown winning easily on Monday night, 76-62. Boston College, a team, Joe, that uh, talked to Dana Barrows the other night, and he looked at me, and he said, I wish the season was just starting. Well, there's no question that Boston College has caught on. They're playing extremely well right now. Uh, early in the season, they had some injuries, and the big guys weren't playing well. Dana Barrows has had an outstanding year, but all of a sudden, Beasley and uh, Abel and the rest of the front court doing a nice job for Jimmy O'Brien's ball club. Syracuse, a big win, 88-72. Seton Hall continues to roll along. They beat Providence for the second time in a week. That's a team, Joe, I think that's going to make some noise in the NCAAs. Well, I don't think there's any question if you were to say uh, pick two teams I'd say Syracuse and Pittsburgh in a Big East tournament because of their starting teams but pick two teams that have the depth to go further in the uh, final 64 I think you'd have to talk about Georgetown and Seton Hall from the Big East and Boston College that big upset win on Thursday night in Dana Barrows' final home game 90 to 87 over Syracuse the scores that everyone is looking for first half scores tonight St. John's and Villanova the Johnnies have come back to tie it at 29 and how about Boston College Again, the first score we had up there, they were down about seven or eight. Now they're up seven or eight, and uh, I'll bet you Dana's throwing up some threes down there say, in Providence. I was going to say, do you think Dana has hit a few threes in that comeback? 38-31, and we will continue to update you on those games as the evening rolls on. Our Dodge Player of the Week in the Big East this week, a young man on display tonight here, Cliff Robinson. Well, Cliff Robinson has been playing at that level above that Jim Calhoun has asked of him. Certainly last week in those two big wins over Boston College in Pittsburgh, averaged over 20 points and 11 rebounds, and including the game winner against the Panthers. And we're also taking a look at our Plymouth Freshman of the Week here tonight. He, too, has responded with 11 first-half points. This kid's going to be a very, very good ball player before he's through. Chris Smith, Mr. Quickness, outstanding defensive player, did a great job on two of the premier players in the uh, Big East, Sean Miller and Dana Barros, in those two aforementioned wins, and also averaged 10 points a ball game. Yep, he is a good one. We will be back with some stats and some highlights from the first half, right after these words from your local station.
observed that few things can compete for one's loyalty and affection more than a Honda. This is my lawn, and I love to work on it. I feed it. I keep track of its growth, its thickness. I know every inch of this lawn, and if there's a problem, I fix it. I give it the kind of care and attention you just can't count on from any lawn care company. I mean, this may not be my house, but it is my lawn. We care and it shows. Kim Lawn, we care and it shows. When Kenny was born, Jeff had just started as a nationwide agent. To tell you the truth, I never understood why he liked it so much. Then we had this big storm, and when I saw how Jeff was able to really help families get back on their feet, well, then I understood. Nationwide is on your side. This is the final call for flight 39. Apologize for the delay. In an average business year, an average business traveler serves an average 21 days locked in transit. National has a way to reduce your sentence, and it means you'll never have to encounter another counter. National's Emerald Isle. Freedom at last. second half of Big East Basketball is brought to you by U.S. Air. U.S. Air warms up your winter with flights to Florida, Arizona, and California. By your local Chrysler Plymouth and Dodge dealers. By Reebok Basketball Shoes. When the new legends are made, they'll be wearing Reeboks. And by John Hancock Financial Services. Real life, real answers. And by the Donnelly Directory. It's the Yellow Pages and much, much more. By Eaton Park, where there's always something special cooking. By Allstate Insurance. Leave it to the good hands people. By your all-star Jeep Eagle dealers, where you can always expect the best. And by Pittsburgh National Bank, a bank that's built on pride in performance. 34-29, the halftime score. The Connecticut Huskies up by five. 20 minutes of basketball left at the Fitzgerald Fieldhouse. Mike Orman along with Joe O'Brien. Let's take a look at some stats and highlights from that first half. First, it's Cliff Robinson in action. Here we have Robinson uh, posting up, using his body well. Is not able to control the ball. Tips it to, to his teammate. We're going to see a big block here, and then Robinson's going to come back, pursue the ball. Nice head fake. Up, gets fouled, makes the field goal, and eventually converts the three-pointer. Liked it himself, didn't yes, he? Yes, he did. Brian Shorter, pretty quiet in the first half, just four points, Joe. Actually, the uh, difference in the ballgame so far has been the Connecticut defense. Obviously, they played Shorter extremely well. That's one of the few times that he was able to get open in the paint. That's three halves in a row that Connecticut's been able to hold Shorter down, and not many people have been able to do that this year. Jason Matthews, the only offensive spark for Connecticut, I mean for Pittsburgh. Jason Matthews, one of the, as we mentioned, underrated players in the uh, Big East, does it from three-point land, but he's really good without the ball as he was there. I think the biggest uh, surprise with the statistics here is not the percentages, but the fact that Pitt only has 22 attempts from the uh, floor. I think that's a big, big factor. And the fact that Smith has taken Miller out of the game and the inside guys, DePriest and McLeod, have done an outstanding job on Shorter. Deceptive there on the rebounds, too. 16-13 looks fairly close, but it was 10-4 on the offensive board, and that's a big reason why Connecticut has taken so many more shots, 11. Connecticut just did an outstanding job of pursuing the ball, and it's not necessarily the big guys. Everybody had a nose for the ball early, and for the first 15 minutes, I thought uh, Connecticut outplayed Pittsburgh in terms of offensive rebound. Robinson and Smith lead the way for the Huskies, 13-11. Jason Matthews with eight and a very quiet Pittsburgh offense so far. 29 points in the first half. Halftime score now 35-34. Johnny's by one and Boston College continues to lead Providence by seven. Paul Evans back with his starting ball club. See if Sean Miller can get something down here. Willie McLeod will start the second half for Connecticut. Martin leans in, won't go down. Rebound Robinson. 
And you know Connecticut's going to work the clock as long as they have this lead, Joe. You can be sure of it. Pittsburgh playing a matchup zone now. Jordan looking inside. Robinson had the hand up calling for the ball. Smith on a wing has had a hot hand. Connecticut will be content to take it down 30 seconds. You can be certain. McLeod couldn't handle the pass, and Gene Mongey still points Pittsburgh's way, so they get it back. Tough pass to uh, catch, thrown down by the uh, knees of uh, Willie McLeod, but still something he's supposed to be able to handle. A minute gone here in the second half. No one scored. The crowd here at Fitzgerald again trying to get behind their Panthers. Connecticut now chasing Tate George on um, Matthews. Now into his own. Smith out the top of the zone, number 13. Matchup zone here on the part of both ball clubs early in the second half. Miller gets it inside, shorter, and he was fouled on the way by. Robinson might have picked that up. And obviously, the only effective way to play Brian Shorter is to keep him from getting the ball. If he gets the ball on the block, he's money in the bank. He is really tough. He'll take it to the basket. Uh, he finishes it off real well, and he's also very, very good at drawing the foul. Two double zeros matched up. Shorter at the free throw line. 70% free throw shooter misses the first. That's the second foul on Robinson. He's the only Husky with two fouls. Lead is four. Connecticut's got it. Double down in the corner, Robinson. Now they come back around. Smith. Pittsburgh in a 2-3 zone, but they're paying real attention to Cliff Robinson in the middle. They actually almost play a man-to-man in there. We'll see Bobby Martin trying to front him in the middle of the zone. Gamble squares up. Hits a three from outside. And that is a big plus for Connecticut if Phil Gamble can get a couple of those cranked up. Jim Calhoun's eyes lit up on that one. Skip pass to Miller. Matthews and Miller outside thought about the shot. Now Sean will try one. Knocks it down for three. First points of the night for Sean Miller. Miller seems as if uh, Coach Evans talked to him a little bit, get a little bit more aggressive both offensively and defensively out here in the second half. Gamble can be a very streaky shooter. Inside Robinson, back out McLeod. Smith penetrates, takes the pull up, hits for two more. Anyone that can put the ball on the floor and pull up on a dime, similar to what Smitty did there, is really difficult to play one-on-one. -on -one. 13 for Smith. Down the baseline, shorter, and David Day, quick whistle foul, I believe, on Willie McLeod. Willie gets caught for the same kind of foul he got caught for in the uh, first half, but at that time it was on shorter. Here it was on Martin, just trying not to allow him to establish position on the block. Miller again plants himself, hits the three more. Paul Evans says, welcome back, Sean Miller. Those threes will get you back in the game in a hurry. 39-36. Matthews keeps touch with Gamble over there in the wing. Two man-to-man -man teams and both playing a lot of zones tonight. Hey, George nearly traveled with it. That's what the crowd wanted. So did the pit bench. Seconds on the shot clock. Gamble wide open, can't hit it. Robinson trying to keep it alive, picked off by Miller. Pitt looking to run. Jason Matthews strong to the baseline and a foul outside before the shot on Chris Smith, I believe. 
I think on Tate George, I think what happened is uh, Matthews put the ball on the floor and uh, Tate George had hands on uh, on the uh, penetrating guard and the emphasis on the part of the NCAA this year and the referees is to call that hands-on foul. Here it is, right Tate there. George, yep. left hand on him, trying to steer him. Second foul on George. Miller again. Third in a row! Chris Smith, Tate George, lack of communication there. After Miller's hit two, you can't have him get another open man three-pointer. Nine straight points for Sean Miller, and we're tied at 39. Paul Evans would say you can't keep a good man down. Smith looks to answer. In and out. Rebound. Martin and Shorter all over it. Hit a chance for the lead. Martin on the floor with it. Gets it off somehow to Jason Matthews, and he's fouled on the way up. Connecticut bench wants to travel. They're not going to get it. If he had possession prior to falling down, now he never really had possession, and he did bounce the ball, if you notice there, Mike, and dribbling the ball was what eliminated the travel. Had he not bounced the ball there, Jim Calhoun would have been right, and it would have been a travel. Second foul on Phil Gamble at the line, Jason Matthews, and whether they're playing well or whether they're playing poorly, the pit guards make their free throws. Foul shooting uh, dynamos, both shooting over 90% for the season. Ten for Matthews, timeout on the floor, Pitt, their first lead in a long time, 41 to 39. You may not see me in the sports pages, but I play for one of the world's largest teams, Days Inns, the fastest growing hotel chain in the world. Our most valuable players are the 130 Days Inn owners right here in the Big East Conference. They'll give you a great room at a great price with restaurants, pools, lounges, even meeting rooms. When it comes to great prices and great locations, see why the professional traveler stays with us. You want to drive to the sun with the most features under the sun. Introducing the new Plymouth Sundance with 47 standard features. Prices starting at $88.20. Best value in its class and backed by $7.70 protection. The Plymouth Sundance proves yet again the nine most important words Plymouth knows. Satisfy the customer. Satisfy the customer. Satisfy the customer. See your local Chrysler Plymouth dealer today. If you're planning a vacation this winter, U.S. Air has some good news and some bad news. The good news is U.S. Air has low fares on lots of departures to sunny Florida, Arizona, and California. The bad news is our low fares are round trip. Hit by two, thanks mainly to number three in the white uniform. Sean Miller, three of those three-pointers. As a result, uh, Pittsburgh has five three-pointers out of ten opportunities, and all of a sudden, they have the lead. The difference in the game right there from beyond the stripe. Inbounds pass comes to McLeod. George, a little trouble handling it. Now Connecticut will come back up down two. First time Connecticut's been down, and let's see how they react. And Pitt stays in that matchup zone. It's been pretty effective here in the second half. Robinson able to get it back and then got fouled on the way up by either Martin and Miller. I think Sean Miller got caught for the grab-in foul. Doing what the guard's supposed to do, though. If the big guy puts the ball on the uh, floor in the paint, it's very important that the guards wind up diving, as we call it. Sean did the job there, but wound up grabbing the foot by the wrist. Third personal foul on Miller. Robinson at the line, a chance to tie this up. First points in the second half for Cliff. He's got 14 overall. See if the Huskies come with their full court zone press here. No, they decide not to. Part of that might be the uh, two fouls on Robinson. Jim Calhoun may not want to come out in pressure. Connecticut players look to the sideline. The Connecticut bench call the defense. Smith's on Miller now, and a man-to-man -man gamble out on Matthews. Martin, loose ball, picked up by Shorter, and a foul's going against Connecticut. And sure. Pittsburgh now suddenly getting the loose balls, Joe. Shorter is really tough in the paint, real quick to the ball, and he's so strong once he gets it. 
number three on Tate George. Here we have Martin bobbling the ball. Shorter quick to the ball in the uh, paint up. Draws the foul. It gets John Gwen off the Connecticut bench, and he'll be checking in. Shorter struggling a bit from the free throw line. That's his second miss tonight. George will sit down. Normally a good foul shooter, 70% shooter. Tate George out of the ball game here for UConn. We come in with Gwen, maybe for a little bit of offense. Shorter one of two. He has six. The Pittsburgh lead is one. 42-41, 14-40 to go in the game. Tate George out. That puts Chris Smith back at the point, and he was very effective at the point getting his own shot there in the first half. See if that develops here. John Gwen, little leaner in the lane for two. Maybe that was a nice substitution by Coach Calhoun, getting a little instant offense from Mr. Gwynn. John's not shy, that's for sure. Jason Matthews misses a three. Bobby Martin, big rebound. Seven for Martin. Connecticut, the club, at least for the first five minutes of the second half, a little flat-footed. Gamble can't answer. Great tip up and in by McLeod. Willie McLeod, super response to the Martin offensive rebound down the other end. So both teams going to the offensive glass very effectively here in the second half. Porter was looking inside at Porter. Now looks to drive himself, kicks it out. Durrell will fire. It's a three. Boy, Pittsburgh is living on the threes here tonight. They go back up two. Robinson skip pass to Smith. He drives. Good look for Gwen. Blocked by Martin. Matthews on a wing. Connecticut back defensively. Matthews goes anyway. Blocked by Smith. Short of the rebound, though, and he knocks it home. Seeing a lot of defense, both ends. Two nice blocks. Four-point Pittsburgh lead, and Connecticut wants a timeout. 13 minutes, four seconds left to go. Pitt by four. Back after these words from the local stations. Your special dream needs a special financial performance. Come to Pittsburgh National. We'll give you more loan choices than any other bank in town. Pride in performance. We built a bank on it. Pittsburgh National. It's March, and your Jeep Eagle dealer is blowing away the competition. Get a great deal on an Eagle Premier, plus extra savings. Get cash back on top of your Eagle Summit deal. And get Jeep savings this big as we set out to break all sales records. There's never been a better time to grab savings like these. But hurry, once these deals stop flying, it's all over till next March. See your all-star Jeep Eagle dealers, where you can expect the best. 49-45, pit by four, and getting into their transition game, Joe. A little bit of defense here at both ends. We have the uh, uh, nice block by Martin on Quinn. Here's Matthews now going to try to uh, finish off the fast break. Makes a nice penetration, and right back, you get nice defense on the uh, Connecticut end. Brian Shorter comes up with the offensive rebound, banks it in off the glass. Pittsburgh has come now with full court pressure as we look at the shooting percentages. Connecticut pretty consistent. Pitt really lightened up here in the second half. And part of that from three-point line. John Gwynn, Chris Smith, the guards, Gamble, Lyman DePriest, Robinson up front for Connecticut. Smith comes top of the key. Pitt now after the timeout is switched back to a man-to-man -man from their original matchup zone. Inside, Robinson wants to go and does. And any time that uh, Connecticut finds Pitt in a man-to-man -man defense, you can be sure that they're going to try to isolate uh, Robinson inside on the block. He'll be effectively there. Two-point Pitt lead. Both teams are man-to-man -man teams. are both playing man-to-man. -man. Matthews fakes the three, takes the two, and knocks it down. 12 for Jason Matthews, the only Pittsburgh player in double figures. And Pitt back in his zone again. They just played man-to-man -man one possession after that timeout. John Gwynn knocks down three. 
<laughs> I tell you, I'm not sure Jim liked that shot when it went up, but Jim Calhoun liked it when it went down. Mr. Gwynn can be instant offense when he gets it going. Over there! John Miller might have tried to shoot that as he tried to square up. Porter misses. Martin the fouls. He had a hand in the back of Gwynn, who did a good job to get in there in the rebounding position. That's not the kind of foul that Paul Evans likes to see. 6'7, six, 6'8, six, Bobby Martin against 5'10, 5'11, John Gwynn. Pushing foul. You want to get that. Number three on Martin. So Martin and Miller are playing with three. George has three. He's on the bench for Connecticut. The Huskies the ball again, the chance to get the lead back. Gamble down on the baseline to Priest, left wide open, passes up the shot. Inside Robinson swallowed up in the baseline. Connecticut will reset with 22 seconds on the shot clock. Good defense that time on the part of the pit ball club on the ball game inside to Robinson on the baseline. Priest to shoot at this time. Back rim. Kept alive by Robinson. Back to Smith. Fresh 45. In they go to Cliff again. He hits off the glass. Tate George did a nice job of keeping the ball alive. Uh, Robinson also did a job of keeping it alive. Robinson winds up getting juice. We got a terrific little basketball game on it. Yes, we do. Second half's been very well played. Miller hits a three and is fouled. Chance for four. And that's four in a row, three-point land. The yep. opportunities for Mr. Sean Miller, who was very, very quiet in the first half. Spent a lot of time on the pine. He's got 12 here in the second half, four of four. Off the dribble move, that's tough from three-point land. Normally, uh, Sean Miller likes to have his feet set when he's shooting from that deep. Second foul on Chris Smith. 13 second-half points for Miller. Hit back up by three on the four-point play. A little house cleaning will be done out at the free throw line. 39 seconds still on the shot clock for Connecticut. 10.38 to go in the game. It continues in its uh, matchup zone. And Bobby Martin just picked up his fourth personal foul. Despite the fact that they're in a zone, the inside uh, people on uh, Pittsburgh, Bobby Martin and Shorter, are matching up man-to-man -man on Cliff Robinson, doing a pretty nice job of keeping him from getting the ball, but that particular time Martin gets caught, picks up his fourth. And Pitt gets a lot smaller on the exchange with Brooklyn in there. Gamble, runner in the lane. No. Tapped up and in. Give Gamble credit, I believe. I think Gamble did get the tip. Nine for Gamble. Hit by one. Gamble very quick to get out on Matthews. Too quick about the pit bench. Loose inside. Gamble's got the turnover. Connecticut the ball. A chance for the lead back again. Inside Robinson turns. Hit by a couple of folks. And they're going to give it, I think. Is that Miller he was pointing to? No, I don't think so. I think one of the other inside guys reaching in. Yep. Gave it to Jason Matches, Jason his Matches. seconds. But you can be sure that with Bobby Martin on the bench with his fourth foul, that the Huskies are going to concentrate on their inside game and trying to get it to uh, Cliff Robinson. And he's capable of carrying them for nine minutes. Still nine nice. minutes, 58 seconds to go in the game. Going to say a pretty nice night's work for Mr. Robinson. 20 points with nine minutes to go. Point over his average. But he has been playing at a notch above for a week or two now. Connecticut by one. Darrell Porter now was set up. Find Matthew, or Miller rather, on a wing who was calling for the ball. Now Miller goes through in the baseline, comes out the other side. Paul Evans really upset at the defense on Brian Shorter in the paint. Porter thought about it. Matthews will take it. Hits a three. Boy, it is just bombs away here for Pitt in the second half. Fifty-eight, fifty-six. Robin. 
Robinson turns, reaching, no call. Brooken got away with one there. Up it comes, out of bounds. Foul Tate George, and on George, it's his fourth. Chris Smith back up and into the game. Here we are at uh, Robinson putting the ball on the floor. Quick move. It looks as though uh, Brooklyn may have had yep. all ball. Right ahead ball. As often as not on that instant replay, it's amazing how good the Zebras look when you get a second chance at it. And it's a thankless, thankless job. Even with three guys out there, it's so easy to be blocked out and not be able to get good position. Jason Matthews, the leading scorer for Pittsburgh in the game, steps to the line, his club up to nine minutes straight up to go. And if you get uh, this ball game down to the last five minutes and we have a foul shooting contest, you wouldn't mind having Matthews and Miller there for you, both mm -hmm. at 90% plus. Hit by four again. Smith now will run the show for Connecticut. Smith and Gwen the guard, the priest. Not likely to shoot it. Gamble will, Smith will, Gwen will, and Robinson will. Connecticut stressing the inside game, trying to get it to Robinson. Robinson tried to go up, lost it. It was hit by a pit player out of bounds. It'll be Connecticut ball in a fresh 45. The inside game of the Huskies versus the perimeter game of the Panthers. So far, second half advantage, slightly to the Panthers. Smith looks, finds Gwen on the wing. In the middle, Gamble, turn around, won't go down. Robinson tried to keep it alive. Shorter and Porter, the rebound. Hit by four, a chance to go six or more. Small defensive rebounding team for Pitt, but did a nice job there. Ball inside to Shorter, and he does what he does best. Finishes it off, but a little bit of something extra with the left hand this time. Ten for Brian Shorter, and we've hit a critical time here for Connecticut with eight minutes to go. Down six. Foul is going to be called over the top on Rod Brook in just his first. We're going to get a timeout. Seven minutes, 53 seconds left to go here in the game. 62-56, pit by six. Back after these words. From your local ball fans and pit students. Special cooking at Eaton Park has been for 40 years. Leave it to the good hands, people. Compassion. You can't teach it or place too great a value on it. But you could measure it down this very road on the morning of June 23rd. In the actions of Allstate Claims Adjuster Don Mulder, who at 5 a.m. drove 60 miles to a fire site, all just to shorten the distance between a man's loss and a man's recovery. People like Don Mulder. Another reason. You're in good hands with all state. Welcome back. 62-56, 7.53 left to go here in the game. And Brian Shorter sure finally getting free, Joe. If they get the ball into Shorter such as that, he's money in the bank. Uses his body very effectively to get open. Finishes it off there with a little bit of South Southpaw rendition. And don't forget, coming up, the Plymouth player of the game to be selected at the conclusion of this game and during every game televised by the Big East Conference Television Network. It is all part of the Chrysler Corporation sponsorship of Big East basketball. Murray Williams in the ball game now for the Huskies. See if he can get something done. Big trip here for Connecticut. This is the biggest hole they've been in tonight. Down six. Robinson on the baseline. Oh, good catch by Williams. Layup won't go. Tip McLeod. Willie McLeod, second offensive uh, rebound opportunity here in the second half. Tips it in. Miller again. Hits again. My goodness. Five for five from three-point land for Mr. Miller. 
16 second half points for Sean Miller. Jimmy Calhoun is irate, though, of Mr. Gwynn, though, giving him that opportunity. Robinson misses a turnaround. Porter outlet to Broken. All pit. Rebound shorter for two. Small pit defensive team has done an outstanding job on a defensive board. Jim Calhoun, quick timeout. Six minutes, 54 seconds to go, and this game is turned around. It's a nine-point lead, and Pittsburgh has got it. Hey, we talk about playground legends. You gotta bring up a guy named Lamar Mundane. I've seen him just rain jump shots on people. Four, five, six shots in a row. People just started calling me money. Because <laughs> when he shot, it was money in the bank. He come down and shoot a 15-footer, everybody on the side be hollering, layup. Slam dunks are tough. But when a 35-footer come raining out the sky, it'll wire you up. When the new legends are made, they'll be wearing Reeboks. People have always told me I should travel more. My fourth grade teacher, Mrs. Crowley. Go to the principal's office, McLean. A high school football coach. Take two laps, Stevenson. Flory, my college sweetheart. Get lost, McLean. Don't do it. Oh, well. Now Piedmont Airlines has going places prices. Really low fares to over 170 cities. Call Piedmont or your travel agent now. I think I'll visit Mrs. Crowley. I thought I told you to go to the principal's office. 67-58 with 6.54 to go here in the game. Mike Gorman along with Joe O'Brien. Pitt has scored 38 points in the second half, and we still have 6.54 to go. First half, Connecticut defense, defense, defense. Second half, Pittsburgh offense, offense, offense. Difference in the ball game. Sean Miller, five three-pointers in the second half. He got fouled on one of them. He's got 16 second-half points. That's pretty efficient work from three-point land. Smith lines it up. Long with the jumper. Rebound, Porter. Pitt looks to run. Matthews this time. Got it for three. Wow. Wow. Have we seen a three-point performance here in the second half on the part of the Pitts Panthers or what? The lead is 12. And Connecticut has played well. George can't hit. McLeod's follow won't go. Miller the push. Cross court quarter. Underneath Matthews. Tip up. No. Rebound George. Foul Brian Shorter at half court. Connecticut has to get back into sync now. They have to get something done here in the half-court offense. Have to cut into that 12-point lead. Every possession becomes important for the Huskies now. Pitt's matchup zone has been very effective here in the second half. No one able to get anything done really has been Robinson inside when they've gotten the ball in the paint. Gamble in, Williams out. Robinson on a cut gamble, lays it up, won't go, left hand, gets it back, fakes the pass, that won't go. Rebound, Brooken, done a nice job since coming in for Martin. As we mentioned, that small ball club has been the best defensive rebounding team that Pitts had on the court. Inside, shorter! We'll have another UConn timeout coming up. Four to go. Pittsburgh by 14. There's always paperwork when you buy a house. This pretty much says that nobody's got a gun to your head, but you're entering this agreement freely. The next says the property's insured for the amount of the note, and you sign that in the lower left corner. The next says the house is free of termites. I hope you brought your checkbook. This is the fun part. I say that all the time, though most people don't think so.
the comforts of flying Piedmont's first class. This may be the greatest comfort of all. Pittsburgh really getting it cranked up here in the second half. An excellent ball movement right here, Joe. Example of team basketball. Miller nice feet off to the weak side. You go the ball over to Matthews. Matthews inside to Shorter, who uses his body very effectively to beat McLeod and then the super dunk. But as you mentioned during the uh, break, Michael, Pittsburgh, if ever there was a Jekyll and Hyde personality in basketball, when they're good, they can be very, very good. Ask Oklahoma, ask Syracuse, ask Georgetown, ask Connecticut here in the second half. And obviously, three-pointers, 10 for 16 for Pitt, 5 for 5 in the second half for Miller, difference in the ballgame. Robinson can't get it to fall. Porter, a rebound. Pitt with some numbers on the break here. Shorter couldn't handle the pass. Good pass by Porter. Should have been caught by Shorter. Took his eye off the ball. Villanova by three with 12 minutes remaining. 47-44 over St. John's. Gamble, big lead three. Misses it. Brooken again is there. Loose ball. Robinson, he'll get an easy two. Rod Brooken has really showed us something on that defensive board since Bobby Martin fouled out. Or picked up his fourth, I should say. See if Connecticut has one last run left in him with 4.35 now to go in the game. That's travel as Brian Shorter did a 360 and kept moving his feet all the way around. Anytime you use those foot fakes, it's very, very difficult. You have to be real quick with getting the ball on the floor if you don't want that travel. Huskies need points and they need them in a hurry. Inside Robinson turns. Won't get it. Got his own rebound. He got two more. 25 for Cliff tonight. He's done his part. Steele gamble in the backcourt. Leans in. Gets two. And very quickly, Pittsburgh now decides they'll take a timeout. So it's not over till it's over. And with four away to go here. All of a sudden, the lead has been cut to eight after Pittsburgh was off and running. Connecticut. Paul Evans with some final words for the official. Connecticut defense, defense. Nice steal by Gamble there to come up with the uh, deuce to uh, cut it to eight here. Jim Calhoun in uh, the huddle now, stressing the defensive matchups. Every, every opportunity down court is, is vital. He can't allow Shorter to get it in the paint, and you certainly can't give uh, Miller the easy three-point open shot. And look at this. My goodness, has that game gone back and forth. Now Providence by 22, 73 to 51, with 13 minutes remaining. Last score we had was 38-31, which would mean, if I do some quick math there, that Providence has outscored Boston College about 42 to 13. 42 to 13. They must have gone boxing one and done something crazy on Barros. Four minutes, eight seconds left to play here at Fitzgerald. 72-64. Hit by eight. They've got the ball. Connecticut full court pressure. Extended full court zone press. Be sure the uh, aggressive double teams now. They trap Miller. Pretty good trap. Jim Calhoun trying to argue it went off the foot of Sean Miller. Pitts going to have a hard time. They just get it across. I mean, got it across by a second. And Tate George just fouled out of the game. Tate George with his second hands-on foul on the dribbler. Jim Calhoun will go to John Gwen off his bench. George fouls out with just two points tonight. Bobby Martin is going to come back in for Pittsburgh. And Rod Brooken will go to the bench, and Rod Brooken played very, very well in that stint of about seven or eight minutes here. Particularly on the defensive board. When Martin uh, went down, they figured that the Huskies would have a little bit of an advantage in the rebounding uh, situation, but in fact, that never happened, and uh, due mostly to the efforts of Rod Brooken. Brooken didn't score a point, but he was a factor. Porter misses. Rebound with Gamble. Connecticut has a chance to get back to within six now. Still plenty of time to go. Again, the pit matchup zone been very, very effective. No one able to do anything against it has been Cliff Robinson. Chris Smith looks to his coach, Jim Calhoun. 
comes to McLeod, looking to feed inside Robinson. Cliff goes, too hard off the glass. Rebound tracked down by Smith. Connecticut another shot. Time a factor. Time for a three-point offense. 3.15 to go in the game. Gamble will try. Hey, in and out. Rebound. Foul John Gwynn over the top. Good ball on the part of Joe Mingle. Looked as if Gamble's three-pointer was going to fall that time. Sure did. We mentioned very, very tough to come back against Pittsburgh there because if you put Matthews and Miller to the foul line, it's money in the bank. Matthews and Miller both 90% free throw shooting, and you can see in Big East competition, Jason a little higher than that. Interesting uh, note uh, with Tate George fouling out. Uh, wasn't able to get much done tonight. Had two assists, I think, on the night. When he has five assists and has a ball game over the last two years, Connecticut is 25 and 6. Pittsburgh able to contain him tonight. Wasn't able to get much done in his ball play. 22 points for Jason Matthews, who leads all scorers. Paul Evans is up looking for a technical foul as Connecticut tried to get a player in the game. Slightly late reporting. Gwen fires, knocks down three. Good court pressure, UConn. Good trap, but Matthews able to find Martin. Matthews just over by a second near steal. Miller comes up with it, and a foul on Smith. On Chris Smith, his third. And again, a 90% free throw shooter steps to the line. UConn very aggressive, had two good double teams, one in the backcourt, one right here at the 10-second line. Almost come up with a steal. Chris Smith got caught for the retain foul. Dan Cerula comes in, and Willie McLeod sits down. And Jim Calhoun puts some height in there. Cerula, the seven-foot freshman. Seventeen points for Sean Miller, all in the second half. And he's hit nothing but net from the foul line and from the three-point line. Quarter out on Gamble. Robinson takes a three. Knocks it down from the corner. 28 for Cliff. Long pass comes to Porter, and now Pitt will set up. 2.18 to go, six-point lead. Pitt now very content to take the clock down. Shorter turns and faces Robinson. Stripped by Robinson, knocked out of bounds, but in a way, that's good for Pittsburgh as they get a fresh 45. Quick hands, good hands on the part of uh, Cliff Robinson. Shorter turn, face, made a nice strong move on him. Now, Jim Calhoun up saying no reset of the clock, and I think Gene Mongey agrees with him. Now the question was, how much time was left on it? Pittsburgh fans say 44 seconds. Yes, yeah, they did. <laughs> down around 21 to be honest but I'm not sure you're gonna be close 22 t2 201 on the game clock 22 on the shot clock hit the ball and up six Matthews some trouble and he has to call a timeout good defense by Connecticut is that Jason Matthews couldn't get it in and we'll stay right here as the Connecticut players huddle around Jim Calhoun. And you get in a position like this, Joe, you're going to have to win this game ultimately with offense. But right now, you're going to have to win it with defense. Oh, you can only get back in a ball game such as this with defense. But in fairness to the uh, Connecticut ball club, they've played an outstanding uh, game defensively over the course of the uh, night. It was their offense, I thought, in the second half that let them down. And then they fell asleep a little bit on Miller on his fourth and fifth three-pointers. The first three may be Darum because he had had such a poor first half. But once he's hit three, there's no excuse giving him another open man jump shot. Jason Matthews and Miller have combined for 40. 
of the 76 points the Pittsburgh Panthers have on the board tonight. And normally at this time in the uh, ball game, you like to have a couple of timeouts left so that you could call them after a score in order to stop the clock. But Connecticut only has one timeout left. Pittsburgh has two. Providence, of course, beat Pitt twice this year. Connecticut with the win last Saturday by two. Pitt a chance to avenge that here if they can hold on for the next 201. Porter having a little trouble finding Shorter, and Robinson bumps him out of bounds, and that's the foul Connecticut wanted to give. Third on Robinson. It puts Shorter at 70% at the line, but I think what Jim Calhoun's philosophy might be here, Joe, you correct me if I'm wrong, but they've got a foul before it gets in the hands of Matthews and Miller. I think foul anyone else. You can choose your poison, but you can't send the, either one of the dynamite uh, shooting guards to the foul line. All right, let's see what Shorter does. Pretty smooth on that one. 15 for Shorter, 11 in the second half as the pit offense has come alive to the tune of 49 points in the second half. Exploded, and particularly from Perimeterville. Chris Smith back quickly, front rims of three, the follow slapped around, loose on the floor. And it'll be Connecticut ball, I believe, on the alternating possession. So the Huskies get another shot with 148 to go down eight. And they'd love to get a three if they could. John Gwen will inbound. Jim Calhoun's going to leave Sirolik in. I thought he might sub here. And a traveling violation called by Gene Mongi, the outside official. The uh, young man taking the ball inbounds versus pressure is allowed a half a step, but he really can't take a full step and move his pivot foot. Now Pitt in the situation they want to be in. The ball in the hands of Miller. Robinson flashed a look to the bench to see whether they wanted to come out and foul shorter. And fit in their version of a spread offense. And Chris Smith looking to make the foul and picks up his fourth. It'll put Darrell Porter, a 73% free throw shooter at the line. Eight point game, 126 to play. A lot of ball club, 73% would be your best foul shooter. Yeah. He would be the best foul shooter at Syracuse. Oh, by a wide margin. Nine for Porter as he drills them both. I can't believe that Paul Evans doesn't have totally gray hair or that he isn't completely bald because it is so difficult to explain this Pittsburgh team. Smith back rims the three. Outlet to Miller. They won't catch him. Missed the layup, but short of the follow. 18 for Brian Shorter, and it appears Pittsburgh will win their 16th of the season. A three knockdown and a quick timeout by Connecticut, their last one. Was that missed left-handed layup by Miller, his only miss of the second half? I believe it is, Joe. I believe it is. Pure from the foul line, pure from three-point land, misses the layup. Winds up getting an assist, though, off the backboard to Shorter. 57 seconds to play. And here come the Pitt Panthers. This is the difficult thing about uh, three-point offenses. You get a lot of long rebounds, and when you get the long rebound, you have opportunities for fast breaks. Here's one that Miller would like to have back. He should shoot that right-handed and make the layup instead of shooting it lefty. But Mr. Shorter is there, the opportunist. Ever the hustler, Brian Shorter. Shorter with 18, 14 coming in the second half, and it was really Sean Miller, Jason Matthews, and Brian Shorter who all came alive after really a very listless first half out of the three of them. As I mentioned, uh, you know, uh, Paul Evans has to be pulling his hair out. You know, how do you know which Pittsburgh team is going to show up? They are dynamite. They're explosive this second half. They can play with anyone. But the way they played in the uh, first half, anyone can play with them. It's a nine-point game, 57 seconds to go. Miller finds Porter. Quickly to Brooklyn. And Gamble reaches in for the foul. Four seconds go off the clock. And Gamble is third. Rod Brooklyn gets a turn this time at the free throw line. 
Both teams continue to make multiple substitutions. Cerulek back in. Pittsburgh wants to have its ball handling team in there. Brooklyn at 65%. Second half here, everyone looks as if they're clones of Miller and Matthews. Everybody, nothing but net for Pittsburgh. Whoops. You got him, Joe. It's 10. Quick push, Smith leaves it for Cerula, gives it back to Smith. Gamble sets himself. Short with the three, rebound to Brooken. And Brooken's off to the races. 85-73. Pittsburgh will go to 9-7 on the season. And pending the outcome of tomorrow's Georgetown-Syracuse game, could finish as high as third. And the field house goes crazy as Mr. Colombo, graduating senior, comes into the ball game. Scott Colombo, the only senior on this club, as Darrell Porter sits down. Nice gesture on the part of Paul Evans getting the young man in the ball game. Foul on Jason Matthews outside. And Paul Evans down to our left shaking his head. And what are you doing, guys? Here's a look at Scott Colombo. Played his high school ball with Doug West. They're on the same team, the fine senior down at Villanova. We'll try to update you before we go off the air on those other two Big East games going on. Chris Smith at the uh, foul line had an outstanding uh, first half, was a big part of that uh, Connecticut halftime lead. Hasn't been able to get much done here in the second half. Just a free throw, Robinson puts it up and drew a foul from Bobby Martin, who just fouled out. Actually, a big factor in the uh, ball game has been the effectiveness of the pit defense. A uh, matchup zone in the second half, get out to the perimeter shooters, and the only one that they really didn't totally contain was Cliff Robinson. And then, of course, Mr. Perfect, Mr. Miller, five for five from three-point land. That does them an awful lot for your offense. Robinson at the line, a chance for a 30.9 if he makes both of these, and he's been flawless at the free throw line. Player of the week in the Big East last week and still playing like it this week. 30 for Cliff. Ball into Matthews. Colombo is able to save it into Brooken. Up to shorter. Brooken. Count the bucket and the foul. 19 seconds to go. Another look. Here we go. The nice little save by the senior Colombo. Fieldhouse reacts to this. Brooken finds Shorter underneath. Shorter back to Brooken. Brooken for the dunk. We are approaching a 60-point second half by Pittsburgh. That's Just amazing, Joe. Outstanding uh, performance on the part of the Panthers. And they did it with Bobby Martin in serious foul trouble for much of the second half. Just an outstanding uh, offensive show in the second half here. Smith down low. Robinson still two more. Gamble picks off that pass at half court. John Gwynn gives it up to Smith, who lines up a three and knocks it down at the buzzer. Count it, but it's too late. And the final score here at Pittsburgh, 88 to 80. Paul Evans is Pittsburgh Panthers may have just cemented themselves an NCAA tournament berth as they are now 16 and 11 on the season. We'll be back to wrap it up right after this. For the past 10 years, Big East basketball has meant excitement. Zurich is the last shot. Washington, two seconds. Now 
you can relive magic moments like these and more as Coca-Cola and the Big East Conference present a decade of excellence. Hear exclusive interviews with the players, coaches, and people who have made the Big East Conference college basketball's hottest story of the 80s. Mike could not hang on. Miller with a three on two. Lane. Reserve your copy of this exciting video today. Just $24.95 includes shipping and handling. Write a decade of excellence. Care of the Big East Conference, 321 South Main Street, Providence, Rhode Island, 02903. Order your copy today. Video released in April. Welcome back to Fitzgerald Fieldhouse, everyone. 88-80, the final score. The Pittsburgh Panthers winning by eight. Just an amazing second half for Pittsburgh as they score 59 second half points to pull this one out here tonight and improve their record to 16 and 11 overall, nine and seven in Big East play, and that nine and seven Big East record may indeed be enough to get them as much as third place in the conference, depending upon the outcome of tomorrow's game between Georgetown and Syracuse, and you would think it could get an NCAA tournament berth again for Paul Evans' club. Let's go right now to Joe O'Brien, who's with the Pittsburgh coach. Congratulations, Paul. Great comeback. Nice uh, win for the ball club. Tell us what you said at halftime to turn this around. Well, we just felt, felt we had to do better offensively. We had to do a lot better off the boards. We gave them too many second shots. And we felt by going to a zone, they may speed up their offense a little bit, which I thought they did, and we kept the ball away from Robinson much better in the second half. Well, we thought that the difference in the ball game was obviously the outside shooting of uh, Sean Miller, but particularly the defensive ploy where he went to the matchup zone seemed to be very, very effective. Is that something you've been doing more of late? Well, we used to do a lot of it, and we haven't done that much. And we worked on it the last couple weeks. I think once you get into tournament time, people start tightening up a little. They don't shoot quite as well, so we plan to use a little bit more. I'm going to ask you the toughest question of all. I said uh, on air time, I couldn't understand why you weren't completely gray or completely bald. Which is the real Pittsburgh team, the team that played in the first half, the team that played in the second half? Well, I hope it's the one that played the second half for the next couple weeks. But they're a young group, and you know they've worked real hard, so that's, that's a good plus for them. And I think it's, usually they get behind. Maybe it's not out of effort. Like uh, in early in the first half, shorter couldn't get the ball, so he came out and took some bad shots from three-point range, even. But I think as he matures, that won't happen. Well, I would imagine that might be the only explanation because when you've been good, you've been very, very good, and uh, when you've been bad, maybe it is a little bit of immaturity. But certainly, second half here tonight bodes well for you as you go into the uh, Big East tournament play. We wish you well there, and we'd like to think, uh, Mike and I, that this maybe assures you a NCA performance. Okay, we hope so. Thanks a lot. And I'd like to go back to my sidekick, Michael. Okay, Joe. Thank you very much. Thanks to Paul Evans for stopping by. And again, that may well be an over-the-hump game for the Pittsburgh Panthers as we look at Sean Miller. That's a big league three. The kid is shooting right there, and he just buried every one that he put up tonight. And for his second-half performance, where he scored all 18 of his game points, Sean Miller is our Plymouth player of the game. Five of six from three-point range. Had fouled on one of those and had a four-point play. And again, just an outstanding performance by Sean Miller tonight. He was backed up by Jason Matthews, who had a total of 22 for the game, and Brian Shorter with 14 second-half points. Also finished up with 18, but Sean Miller was the key for Pittsburgh tonight and indeed is our Plymouth player of the game. On the other side...